beautiful people, welcome back to the channel, Pops and Petals here, everything garden and allotment related. It's Saturday the 10th of June, we've got a scorcher of a day, it's not even 10 o'clock in the morning and we've reached 24 degrees, so I'm going to be enjoying the sunshine today. Tomorrow I'm going to be filming the Polly House uh, video for you guys, because I know a few of you have been asking about the Polly House. So keep your eyes out for that tomorrow, but today is just going to be a tidy up, enjoy the sun, and potter around the garden. So come on, come with me, see what we can do, and see what we find throughout the day. One of the jobs I need to get done today is I need to clear the pond out. We've got quite a lot of blanket weed, um, pond weed in there, and it's starting to cover up some of the rhizomes at the back. So we need to remove that off because you need the sunlight really to be hitting those rhizomes for the plant to get as much energy as possible. And it also helps just oxygenate the water, which in turn just benefits the pond in general. So we want to fish quite a bit of this out. Don't worry too much about getting every single bit, but it's good to have a, a good clean out of your pond probably twice a year. Now isn't the best time, but it is just very weedy in there so let's get in and see what we can get out so if we get a bit closer you can see all the pond weed is this green stuff here they call it blanket weed because it does literally blanket all around the pond and as you start to pull it you'll be pulling big clumps from further back so as you can see here it just keeps coming so you can get a stick and just start to twirl it around the stick and pull it out. But I do prefer to just get in with my hands. And what you want to do is you want to leave it by the side of the pond, just like I've done down here, so that any insects that are caught up in all that weed that you've just pulled out can find their way back into the pond. I've already seen some baby newts in here. I've still got tadpoles, baby water boatmen, uh, snails, all sorts. So it is important that you just keep it to the side just for a day so that all of that can get back in the pond. So just try and be as gentle as possible when removing some of this weed. So you can see there I've got a water lily and it's starting to grow all around the base. So you just want to try and pull as much of that away as possible so that the sunlight can get down to that water lily to help it grow. As you can see there's quite a bit here. Now my water lily has not bloomed, it's second summer this year so I'm hoping for a bloom this year. I haven't seen anything as of yet, just plenty of leaves still. But it might take a couple of years. Got to be patient. I'm just going in, picking as much weed up as I can. So that's a baby water boatman. They are, um, beetles and they do fly from pond to pond so it's okay to be out of the water but we'll pop him back in we've got quite a few baby water boatmen we've got pond skaters quite a few baby ones of those as well and if I find a frog or a newt or anything I'll try and capture it on camera for you but I'm going to try and get in on the other side because it's quite bad over there so as you can see in here we've got quite a bit of weed growing so we want to try and make some space for the mare's tail to take over because that will oxygenate the water much better than this weed which is actually blocking out the sunlight which isn't any good for the pond plants <laughs>
So I have managed to clear quite a bit of the um, pond weed out. You should be able to see it's a bit clearer in there. I've cleared it all off these rhizomes. I did start bringing up some of the stones, so do watch out. Try and just wash it out in the water, keep the stones in. But you are going to pick up some of the stones on the bottom. But yeah, it should give the pond plants a little bit more room to grow, oxygenate the water a little bit better, which will just make the pond a bit of a better place for the pond creatures to live. So I've got some baby newts in there. I've got quite a few actually. I don't want to pick them up because they are quite delicate looking. But I can't find mummy or daddy newt so far. And plenty of tadpoles too. So lots going on in here. So I think it's time for a new plant. My time is almost dead. We've got a bit of green growth on there and a few, few little flowers. But I think I need to replace this. And I'm thinking a fern because I do like the ferns around the pond. Or even a hosta. Some nice foliage, quite a large one. And then down here is my, my bonsai lavender. I didn't mean to. I just found myself cutting back the dead and this is what I was left with. So I might find a new home for that and get another fern over here. But if you've got any ideas, guys, something that will fit in a pot, doesn't mind a bit of sunlight, and will look nice around a pond. this area was an absolute mess. So today I've actually had some help from my grandparents. They pop down, I don't know, once a month just to get out in the garden. They do have a big garden themselves but a lot of it is pots now so they like to come down and get their hands in the soil. So this is the area that they've cleared for me today and later I will be popping in my squash plants. So I'll run through the squash that I've got this year when I start popping them out and they're actually going to be nice enough to do the fruit cage for me as well so that's their job for today they're a couple of good eggs them too
just from digging around in that dirt, I've managed to get us some potatoes for supper. So this one's not any good, so that will pop on the compost heap. And you don't want to be eating green potatoes either. So I will get rid of that one. But if you do find some of them just have little tips of green, you can just chop that off before eating it. So don't throw them all away, but that's pretty green, so we'll get rid of that. But yeah, that's a nice little find. It's quite early in the year to be getting salad potatoes, but they've been growing in there all year. They're the volunteer potatoes, so we'll have to see what they're like. But they look pretty nice, so that's for tea tonight. So I've given these beds a real good weeding. The ground underneath was really, really dry. So I've given it a good water um, and then I've mulched the top with some fresh compost. We've even got ants, um, red ants nesting in there, it was that dry. So I gave it a real good soaking. In the middle there we've got the, the dahlia and then we've got the Mexican flea bean just there. And in here we'll be going the squash. So I'll probably pop one, two, three in these beds over here and then down here where I found the potatoes we'll um we'll probably pop another one in there as well I just popped in the poly house it's 43.8 degrees in here at the moment so these squash are finding it a little too difficult in here they've got their second lot of true leaves growing so it's about time these guys got out in the ground and you, you can see some of the yellowing off with those seedling leaves. That shouldn't harm them too much, but it's definitely a sign that they're stressed and it's time that they got planted out properly so that they can get their roots into the proper soil and start getting some moisture from, from deeper down. So these are gonna go out. The whole polytunnel needs a good, good water in. The cucumbers are looking a little sad, so we'll give it a good water in as well in here. The tomatoes at the back, it's about time they got planted out. So we've got the butterfly, the butternut squash. We've got a baked potato, a mashed potato. We've got two lots of Yuchiki curry. And we've got a Maria di Chuggia. Um, Yuchiki curry I've had before and I've done butternut squash. But butterfly is also a new one. And the rest are all new this year. So I'm really excited as to how these guys are going to turn out hopefully we'll have a bumper crop this year. In here we're going to pop one of the Maria di Chogia. So we're going to dig a hole for it to go into. And when planting a squash you don't want to bury it any deeper in the pot than what it already is because you will rot the stem off. And in another bucket, I've got some compost with chicken manure, and that's got plenty of nitrogen to get the, um, the squash going, to give it a bit of a boost. So we're just going to slide one of these out. You can see the nice root system on there. It's not too pot bound, so it should do quite well once we get it into the ground. So you want to press it down so you know it's nice and firmly in and then the thing that you can do is just make a trench around the outside so that any water when you do water collects around the plant and should act as a bit of a water reservoir reservoir and keep those roots nice and moist so just make sure that's nicely in there And then I will just give it another sprinkling, another sprinkling of chicken manure pellets.
So we've got the squash planted in. We've got three here, three here, so that's six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve in that other bed that I just planted up. I've got a few more, so I might try and find some other homes dotted around the allotment. But the rest I will just give away to other plot holders down here. I've mixed them up, so I don't know what's what, but I know I've got an equal amount of the different varieties. So we're giving them a nice feed, a good watering in, and now we've just got to let them grow. Hopefully a bumper crop of squash. So I've just been poking around in the wild area, and I've just seen the snakehead fertilities have gone to seed. That's what these are. So inside here, there are tons of little seeds. And the idea is that as this shakes in the wind, the seeds will sort of pop out. A bit like that. So I'm just going to get some in my hand and we'll spread them around just so that we can get more spread out across but as you can see that just pinged quite a few around so there are the seeds to the snakehead fertilities and we'll just sow them all around the wild area and see if we get any more next year i think that is all we've got time for today it is an absolute scorcher it's about half one and it's about 27 degrees so it's only going to get a little bit warmer by by three-ish so i think we're going to head home I'm going to sit in the garden with a book, soak up some of the sunshine and chill out. And then tomorrow I'll come down and I'll film the poly house video, I think. I hope you're out. I hope you're enjoying the sun, having a lovely weekend. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment and all of that good stuff. And um, I'll see you again down here soon. So take care, guys. See you later. Bye bye.